Welcome to this week's podcast entitled Acid-Based Chemistry and Medicinal Chemistry, a part of the Medicinal Chemistry course of the NCSSM online program. What we want to talk about this week is a little bit about, a little more about drug interactions, specifically predicting how a drug molecule behaves in a living organism. And our primary concern at this stage in the course is this concept of getting the drug into the body. We've spent the past several weeks talking about solubilities and various ways to predict solubilities. You should have a pretty good idea by now that there are roughly two environments in the body. You have an aqueous or water-based environment and you have a lipid or fat-based environment and getting the drug into the body and, and into the right place where it can do what it's intended to do really depends on being able to predict and understand uh, the, the solubilities, the hydrophilicities, and the lipophilicities. Okay, so we're going to continue talking about those in this particular uh, podcast with an emphasis now on the role of acids and bases uh, as ways to think about how, getting, how to get the drug into the body. Okay, a quick review of hydrophobicity and hydrophilicity, and recall that you can use these terms interchangeably. Uh, as it says there, hydrophobicity, hydrophobicity is synonymous with lipophilicity. And lipophilic, I tend to use the more philic term, so lipophilic and hydrophilic. Lipophilic molecules are typically nonpolar molecules, such as the alkanes, the carbon-hydrogen compounds that all have single bonds. Uh, oils are typically nonpolar. Fats, of course, are nonpolar. And then keep in mind the uh, saying that like dissolves like. So polar molecules dissolve polar molecules. Nonpolar molecules dissolve nonpolar molecules. And as I just mentioned, this is sometimes used synonymously. Hydrophobicity and lipophilicity are used synonymously. Okay, hydrophilicity uh, is. Um, soluble in aqueous solutions, and this is because of the hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonds well with water. Uh, anything that is hydrophilic, it dissolves well in water. And again, these are typically polar molecules. Water is a polar molecule, so water tends to dissolve polar molecules. And here's a picture showing a, uh, uh, these hydrophobic forces. So you have a molecule in blue there. Uh, that is surrounded by water, and you should be able to see how the hydrogens are hydrogen bonding to the red oxygen molecules in this particular picture. Okay, uh, we continue in this week's activity of trying to evaluate drugs for hydrophilicity or lipophilicity. We're going to, as I mentioned earlier, take a, add another twist to this by looking at the role of acids and bases in helping us to determine these things. So uh, this graphic here is showing a sampling of a number of drugs, and it is often the case that we can classify drugs as being acidic or basic. Okay, So you see at the top of this graphic here, acidic drugs, and we'll talk about the chemical reaction there. So things like penicillin V, uh, uh, penicillin v uh, aspirin, acetosalicylic acid, ascorbic acid, phenobarbital, boric acid, AZT, okay, all of these are considered to be acidic drugs. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, drugs that are considered to be basic, uh, things like caffeine, theophylline, morphine, erythromycin, amphetamines are all considered to be um, basic drugs. And some of you may be familiar with this concept of, of KA and KB. And we're going to spend some time talking about that in this particular concept uh, podcast. Okay, a little bit of acid-based chemistry. Some of you, all of you, should have had some acid-based chemistry if you've taken general chemistry. If you've not had any of this, uh, you may need to do a quick review in a general chemistry textbook, or let me know that you need a little bit more background, and we can try to help you out with that. Um, there are a variety of definitions of acids and bases, and for the purposes of this podcast, I'm going to say that acids are typically classified as compounds that can give up or donate a hydrogen ion, or an H plus ion, whereas bases are typically classified as compounds that can give up or donate a hydroxide ion, or OH minus uh, ion. And what you see in the bottom here is the general form that we use for uh, showing a, an acid, 
acid reaction or acid base reaction. HA there means that's the acid, where H is the proton or the hydrogen ion that's going to be donated. And this typically happens in water, so we typically show this with water. So HA is the general form for any acid, and H2O, of course, is water. And this reacts to form, uh, a, it forms a new anion called A-, and we're going to call that the conjugate base. And it forms the forms the uh, what's called a hydronium ion or H3O+. So you should be able to see that the H is breaking off of the HA and uh, leaving a uh, the A minus ion all alone, and then connecting to the hydrogen to the water to form H3O+. Okay, so acids dissociate, and that's the term we use here to form a conjugate base, or A minus, and the hydrogen ion H plus. And again, the hydrogen ion is often shown as moving to water to form this hydronium ion, or H3O plus. So what you see in the graphic there is we have acetic acid, and what you should notice with the acid is, first of all, you should be able to figure out that that's ethanoic acid, okay? And you should be able to see the double bonded oxygen on the carbon. Then you should see the OH group. So the COOH group, this is a carboxylic acid. And, uh, and then you see the water molecule with the red oxygen and the two hydrogens. And this will react. The hydrogen leaves the carboxylic acid and make sure you can see where it's leaving from. And you now have the ion. Uh, of uh, the COO, COO minus ion there, and then the hydronium ion, you see the oxygen with three hydrogen atoms on it. Okay. The way we talk about these things, you're probably familiar with the concept of pH, but really chemists will use the concept of Ka and pKa, where Ka is known as the acid dissociation constant. K is the Typical symbol we use in chemistry to represent a dissociation or a molecule breaking apart or dissociating into two ions. The little subscript A there, of course, represents uh, acid. And typically, and certainly true in medicinal chemistry, we typically don't talk about Ka's. They're going to be values like 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. So what we do, and uh, we take the logarithm of those values, and that turns it into something called a pKa. So we typically represent uh, Ka's as pKa's. And the larger the pKa, the weaker the acid. So alternatively, the smaller the pKa, the stronger the acid. So weak acids have a pKa of about minus 2 to about 12 or so in water. Strong acids typically have a pKa of less than, less than minus 2. Okay, you, now you see some of the mathematics. So Ka is equal to the, and what we have on the top there is the, is the concentrations of the products of the reaction you saw earlier. So you see the concentration of the A minus, the concentration of the A plus, all over the concentration of the acid. We leave water out of, out of uh, this equation. So this is the Ka. Uh, dissociation uh, equation. And to take the pKa of that value, I take the log uh, to the base 10 of the Ka and then change the sign from, uh, basically change the sign. If the log Ka is minus, it becomes positive. If it's positive, it becomes negative. Um, you're going to have to, in medicinal chemistry, it's going to be very important for you to be able to relate the pH to the pKa. Um, and to do that, we're going to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. This is a very common equation, uh, especially in biological chemistry, including med-chem. So the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is shown below, where pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the ratio of the conjugate base, that's the A minus, over the uh, concentration of the acid, that's the HA. Okay? We can also write it that pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the base over, over the acid. So there you'll see a number of ways for us to, to write this thing. Um, and the way you see it on um, 
um, on this graphic is the most common way that we're going to represent this. Okay, the other thing we're going to need to be able to calculate here is the percent dissociation, or another way of calling this is the percent ionization. Okay, we want to know how much a drug dissociates, okay, breaks apart into ions or ionizes, they mean the same thing in a particular environment. So you'll see a percent ionized formula here, and the 100 there on top is going is the thing that's going to make this a, a percentage. And if you, depending on the level of your mathematics, you should be able to see in the bottom that basically I have rewritten the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So to get rid of all the logs, basically we're taking the anti-log of the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation and where I'm subtracting the pKa from the pH. And what you notice there is all of that in, uh, is multiplied by a variable called x, where x is going to be minus 1 if the drug is an acid, is acidic, or positive 1 if it's a basic drug. And we'll talk about how you know if it's acidic or basic in another session. OK, some of the rules that we have to pay attention to. Okay. Acid drugs become more non-ionized, and you'll see the word unionized sometimes, I prefer non-ionized, in an acidic pH. Okay? And again, you have to think about what we're doing. We're putting these drugs into the body. There are some places in the body, like your stomach, that it's a very acidic environment. Okay, There's lots of acid in your stomach. There's other places in your body that are very basic. Okay, The pH is really quite high. So you have to know uh, where you're putting the drug and then use that to be able to figure out will this molecule uh, dissociate or not disassociate. Okay, uh, so acidic drugs become more non-ionized in acidic pH and basic drugs become more non-ionized in basic pH or alkaline pH. Okay, and we're going to provide you with a chart here to try to help you get a sense of this. Okay, so I have my acid drug and I have my basic drug. Okay, well what if I put I have an acid pH environment like the stomach, okay, or a basic pH environment like, say, the intestines, okay. Um, I didn't want to do that. I think I lost one of my graphics. Okay, we'll come back to that. Okay, here's a way of, of looking at this. So there's my drug pH. It's less than 7. That's an acid. My drug pH greater than 7. That's a base. Okay, if I put the acidic drug into an acidic environment in the body, like the stomach, uh, the drug will be unionized and therefore will be lipid soluble or lipophilic. Okay? If I put that acidic drug into a basic environment like the intestines, it'll be ionized and therefore will become water soluble or, or hydrophilic. Likewise, if I have a basic drug and I put it into an acidic environment like the stomach, it ionizes well and is water soluble or lipo or hydrophilic. And if I put a basic drug into a basic environment like the intestines, it, it does not ionize and therefore it's lipid soluble. Okay. All right. Uh, here's the graphic I think I wanted to do. There we go. That one's now working. Okay. So acidic drug in an acidic environment is non ionized. A uh, basic drug in a basic environment is non-ionized, and an acidic drug in, or excuse me, a basic drug in an acidic environment is ionized, and an acidic drug in a basic environment is ionized. So you got two op two choices here, ionized or non-ionized. Okay. All right. Let's talk about why that matters. Okay. If you have an ionized molecule, if your drug ionizes, if it dissociates into two ions, it is, we would consider it to be hydrophilic. If the molecule does not ionize, it is not charged, and it is lipophilic. And that's going to be critically important that we can figure out these differences uh, as we go forward in looking at getting the drug into the body. Obviously, lipophilic molecules will penetrate uh, membranes because membranes are made of lipids. Like dissolves like, so polar dissolves in polar, and nonpolar dissolves in nonpolar, and lipophilic are nonpolar molecules. Okay, so and hydrophilic molecules, of course, dissolve in water. 
here's a graphic that tries to capture a little bit. This is a complicated graphic. I'll encourage you to look at it uh, carefully. So here you see we have a in the stomach where the pH is something like two. We have a molecule that uh, is um, ionized and non-ionized. It looks like in the stomach this particular drug uh, significantly is non-ionized so as a result it is able to cross the membrane and get into the blood right? whereas being that the in a, in, a uh, in the intestine where the pH is a little bit higher it's not it's still acidic but it's higher uh, notice that the this drug is primarily in an ionized form so it really can't get across the membrane you see the arrow there uh, pointing to the number five, you notice that's a very thin arrow. That means some of it will get across the membrane, but not very much. Whereas up top in the stomach, you see the big arrow uh, with the number two next to it is much darker. That means a lot of that drug can get into the into the blood. Okay, depending on if a molecule is ionized or not determines if it can pass through the cell membrane. Okay, so let's give you a schematic here. Here's a cartoon of a cell membrane. I have an ionized molecule, what's going to happen? Okay. It's not going to be able to get through that cell membrane. So it hits that cell membrane and stops right in its tracks. Whereas a non-ionized molecule is going to go directly through the membrane and get into the blood wherever it is it, we're trying to get it to go. Okay. We need three things to figure out whether the drug is majority in lipophilic or hydrophilic form, meaning if it's ionized or non-ionized. We need to know whether the drug is an acid drug or a base drug. And at this stage in your career, we'll probably pretty much be telling you whether the drug is an acid drug or a base drug. We won't ask you to try to determine uh, that. We may give you some simple examples, but that's pretty hard sometimes to figure out whether a drug is acidic or basic. Okay. You need to know the pKa of the drug, which is defined here as the pH at which the number of ionized molecules equals the number of non-ionized molecules. And you need to know the pH into which the drug is going to be placed. You've already should have picked up on the fact that if you're putting the drug into the stomach, that's a very acidic environment and with a pH of around 2, 2.2 or so. And that's going to be critically important for us to know. Okay, so let's try to represent all of this. So let's suppose I have an acidic drug. Okay, it becomes more non-ionized than acidic pH. The green is going to represent non-ionized. The pink is going to represent ionized. Okay. So if I put this acidic drug into a very acidic environment like the stomach, what you should see there is about 75% of the compound is not ionized and about 25% of it is. Okay. If I put it into an environment that's a little closer to neutral, I have looks like a, about a 50-50 ionization. So, so about 50% is not ionized and 50% is ionized. If I put it into a very basic environment, 75% uh, of it is ionized. And if I put it into a much more basic environment, you see almost all of it is ionized. And that pH, look at the pH of 6 there, where I have 50% ionized and 50% non-ionized. Okay. That's going to be, uh, what's the pKa for this drug? Okay. The pKa for this drug is going to be 6. So the pKa is defined as the pH when 50% of the, of the compound is ionized and 50% of it is non-ionized. Okay. All right, let's take a look at a basic drug, see how you do with this one. These become more non-ionized than basic pH. So if I put a basic drug into an acidic environment, you see about 99% of it is ionized. If I put the basic drug into a almost neutral environment, you still see about 75% ionized, 25% not. If I put it into a basic environment, pH of 8, you see there's my 50-50. And a little bit more basic, you see I've got 75% non-ionized and 25% um, ionized. So what's my pKa going to be for this one? You should be able to pick this out pretty easily. And it's going to be the pKa for this drug is going to be 8. That's where the pH at which uh, I have a 50-50 ratio. Okay. So when given the acid-base nature of the drug, the drug P pKa, and the environmental pH where the drug is going to be put into, you should be able to predict 
whether the majority of the drug is in ionized form or non-ionized form. And clearly you're going to get a lot of practice in doing this with the various uh, activities we give you to do this week. Okay, and based on whether or not it's ionized or non-ionized, you should be able to tell me if the drug is hydrophilic or lipophilic. And then you need to be able to predict whether it's going to be able to cross, uh, absorb across a membrane or, uh, for example, PO, which means per orum or by mouth, that's the oral method, or dissolved in water. So SQ is subcutaneous, okay, that's a water-based environment. IM is intramuscular, that's a water-based environment. So if you stick a needle into somebody's arm right into the muscle, it has to be hydrophilic. It has to be able to dissolve in water. If you give the patient the drug by mouth, it has to be able to dissolve across a membrane. Okay, so we'll help, we'll remind you of those things. Okay, so some quick practice problems. You got an acidic drug with a pKa of seven, and we're gonna put it into the stomach where it has a pH of two, and we wanna know if this is gonna absorb well. So what you have to do there, I'm gonna put the scale there, pH of one, the pH of 12. Okay, non-ionized is going to the left, ionized is going to the right. My pKa is 7. That's where my pH is equal to 7. Okay. And there's my pH of 2. And in this case, more drug is in the non-ionized form. And what that means, so is the drug readily absorbed from the stomach? Okay. The answer is yes, Okay, because it can cross that lipophilic, that lipid membrane. Okay. Another problem, we got an acidic drug with a pKa of 7. We're going to put it into the the intestines or the duodenum where the pH there is about six or so. So again, the same graph, my pH uh, is seven where the pKa is seven. So there's my pKa of six. Okay, more drug is in the non-ionized form. <coughs> is the drug readily absorbed from the intestine? The answer is yes. Okay, although it won't, there won't be as much of it that can go across because it's a little bit closer, less is ionized here. Okay, it's a little closer to being 50-50. Okay, I've got an acidic drug uh, with a pKa of 7. I'm going to put it into a subcutaneous environment. Okay, is it absorbed well from subcutaneous injection? Okay, so there's my pH of 7.4. More of the drug is in the ionized form. Is the drug readily absorbed from a subcutaneous injection? The answer is yes, because ionized is hydrophilic, and it gets into that liquid, that water membrane or water environment very easily, and goes from there. Okay, and one last quick problem, okay, and you should, hopefully you're getting the hang of this. We'll spend a fair amount of time in the um, Illuminate mandatory session this week, giving you these practice problems, so you have a chance to really get a chance to uh, learn how to do these. So again, a basic drug, pKa of 7, we're going to put it in the stomach. Is it going to absorb well? More of the drug is in the ionized form. That's a hydrophilic. Is the drug readily absorbed from the stomach? The answer is no, because it's hydrophilic, and we need it to be lipophilic to get across the membrane in the stomach. Okay, and there's one last uh, example. Okay. Can we absorb that from subcutaneous injection? The answer should be no, because we're... Uh, we've got a lipophilic drug in a hydrophilic environment. Okay, So again, we'll work on these Thursday night to really make sure you're able to get those. Okay, what you're going to see uh, in this week's lab is for the 36 drugs that you've been working with uh, over the past couple weeks, I'm going to be giving you uh, data from the ADME web pages. And here's the example for, uh, for aspirin. And what you should see here is the pKa of, uh, of this particular drug is about 3.5 or so, plus or minus 0.5. I'm just going to record it as 3.5. Okay, There's no pKa in a basic environment. There's one ionizable group, and you should be able to see it there up in the highlighted in pink, where you have... Um, a carboxylic acid, you should see the OH there, and that hydrogen that's hanging on the OH is the ionizable group. That's the thing that's going to fall off and form an, a, a, um, a, a, an acid. Down at the bottom, you have what's called a fraction plot, and we'll be asking you to create some of these. Notice that as the what that's showing you is the percentage of the molecule that's, that's ionized 
as we change pH. So you'll be asked to uh, generate this type of a chart uh, for this week's lab. Okay, so you understand what you're seeing on the ADME web pages. So when given the acid-base nature of the drug, the pKa, the environment in which it's put into, you should be able to predict whether it's ionized or non-ionized, whether it's hydrophilic or lipophilic, and be able to predict whether it's going to cross a membrane, either a lipid membrane or a water-based uh, or water-based environment. And your case studies are going to resolve, revolve around things such as given a, a particular drug, can you use Henderson Hasselbach appropriately to figure out how we're going to get this drug from one place to another? If you have any questions, that's the end of this uh, podcast for this week, and we'll see you online.